Hey y'all, good to see you again. It's been about three weeks since we last posted a video. For some of you, college has probably started, high school's probably started, college has started for me as well. So we're a bit more busier, but I promise you guys we'll continue to post content. And for this one, make sure to show some love, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. After all, I got a ton of mosquito bites for this one. We went into the middle of nowhere here in Florida. So I hope you guys can learn something from this video and let us know what you think. In today's video, we'll be doing an experiment to trap as many mosquitoes as we can. Now, you might be wondering what is the animal that kills the most people around the world? If you thought about sharks, you gotta start watching Shark Week. It's capping. Sharks do not kill as many humans as mosquitoes do. So mosquitoes kill approximately 750,000 humans per year. And this is a serious number causing a lot of researchers, scientists to spend basically a lot of their time finding ways to prevent mosquitoes from transmitting diseases and also limiting the population growth of mosquitoes. Now, if you live near the equator or warmer climates, you have to deal with mosquitoes. So in today's video, we developed the homemade trap to trap mosquitoes and other bugs that are attracted to carbon dioxide. And why are we using carbon dioxide? Well, it turns out that mosquitoes and bugs, one of the features that attracts them to humans is carbon dioxide. And other features are human scent. So in this design, we basically took dry ice poured a little bit of water into it and made it vaporize in order for it to attract mosquitoes. And the way we did it was specified. So the gas will travel in two directions into these two bottles. And our idea is that hopefully a mosquito or bugs will funnel in to that area, try to see what's going on there because that might confuse them and then see if they get trapped there. So over the time lapse of a, one hour, we'll see if it gives us any results. One hour later. Now we're gonna check if the mosquito trap effectively worked. We hope to see some mosquitoes trapped in the bottle, but um, by the looks of it, it was a epic fail. I'll go check right now. Yeah, so as you can see, there's nothing there. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. No bugs, but we still got some dry ice. So what I'm probably gonna do is later tonight, put it overnight at my house. There's tons of mosquitoes there. And I'll see if we get something. Yeah, so it's approximately 10 p.m. We got the setup here next to some trees. So hopefully we get some mosquito or insect um, interactions going on in these tubes right here. So ideally what we're aiming for, right, is that the mosquito goes down here and kind of gets trapped here. Same for the other side. That is some serious smoke coming out. We got smoke coming out on both ends. That is some serious, serious smoke. So hopefully... Yeah, so as you can tell, our design was not the best, but that is completely fine in science. In fact, it's all about testing, disapproving, improving, and at the end of the day, the important thing is to learn from your mistakes. So I'm sure I made a ton of mistakes in my design that perhaps some of you guys will point out in the comments. But one of the things I do wanna mention is that science is about pushing through, it's about reiterating and creating new designs. So another thing I wanted to mention the fact that we're doing this mosquito experiment is that there are a lot of scientists doing similar research. They're using, of course, better technology, better traps, but ultimately what they're doing is collecting data. And one of them is the National Ecological Observatory Network here in the United States. I wanna highlight that to you guys, especially if you're a high school student right now at home looking to get involved in a project or perhaps are looking to develop computer skills. I think this is a great data set to work with, especially if you wanna see what the data is all about 
and also improve your skills such as using Python to download the data, unpackage it, and basically explore it through some statistical testing. So I know some of the things mentioned beforehand might be a bit difficult for you right now, especially if you're a high school student. If you're a college student right now, well, I mean, if you're not doing research at your own school, perhaps uh, Neon can provide some insight into what you'd like to do. But I'm really trying to focus here on the high school students, and with the next uh, coming videos, I'll be talking about some science clubs that you can perhaps start at your school. I'll also continue my series of interviews with current college students who are studying different STEM fields, so you guys get insight into what it's like to be in one of those fields. And lastly, I'll be posting some other cool projects, but I'll be focusing more on the scientific method. However, on Sightings on our website, we have a lot of articles and blogs that cover some of this information when it comes to basically preparing a project, to conducting statistical tests, to developing a good paper. So for those of you who are in school and perhaps taking some research classes or are starting to get into like those classes where they start teaching you how to write at a college level, um, we offer a lot of resources on our website that perhaps can be of hope. So thank you and take care. In the comments. What do you think went wrong with this experiment? Perhaps the design was not that effective, or perhaps it takes more than just carbon dioxide, just like human scent or other aspects. So let me know, and yeah, see you guys in the next video.